new videos every day. I'm back with Dr. Griffin Cole. He is a biologic dentist practicing here in Austin, Texas. He is also a board certified naturopathic physician and holds certification in integrative biologic dental medicine. So today I wanna to talk about maybe the dangers of water fluoridation and some of the dangers of having this additional fluoride in our bodies. Can you speak a little bit to that? Sure. Uh, I'd like to make a distinction first between fluoride and water fluoridation, because I think it's important. So fluoride is what we know as uh, what's in our toothpaste. And it's usually either sodium fluoride or it might be a, uh, a, a different form, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pharmaceutical grade fluoride. Um, Whereas water fluoridation is the process of adding a fluoride additive, which is not sodium fluoride or even close to that, to the water supply and ingesting it systemically. And so it's a huge difference because the thing that we've shown scientifically that, that works is topical fluoride, which is what's in your toothpaste, or if you were to have a gel or something, can work. Now, I, I, I still don't think it's necessary for, for good dental health, and I feel very strongly about that. However, I, I won't dispute that it works. It affects the enamel in such a way that makes it more resistant to cavities. But drinking it, you're not doing that. It, it's bypassing the teeth very quickly. You'd have to hold it in your mouth for like 10 minutes to actually get a topical effect and going straight into your body. And by the way, when you ingest fluoride, your body will excrete about 50% of it, and that's it. So you're going to always maintain half of that. It gets in your bones. It, it's stored in your kidneys because that's, that's where we filter. It, it gets in several places in your thyroid gland. So this poses a problem because over a long period of time, you accumulate it. So it's long-term exposure. So we don't even know the full effects, but we do know that it has effect on the thyroid gland, as I mentioned, has effects on the kidneys, has effects on your bones. Uh, um, it, you know, it can cause, oh, it has probably the most obvious effects in your teeth and not in a beneficial way. It's in a negative way. It's the modeling. It's the white spots. It's the fluorosis on your teeth. That is a, we used to call it a cosmetic effect, but I think we've gone beyond that now and we realize it's more of just the physical effect that we see. That means there's been a lot going on systemically to get to this point. So I, you know, to me, it, it's a big distinction. So I don't ever go out against fluoride in general, but I'm definitely anti-water fluoridation. Okay. That sounds like, that sounds like an important distinction. So you mentioned briefly some of the some of the potential issues with water fluoridation can you speak a little bit more in detail about some of the potential effects people may experience or some of the health problems that people may experience as a result of of water fluoridation that's a good question uh, and it's a hard one to answer in that again nothing's going to happen immediately so it's not ever an acute reaction to it long term what i can tell you is several things one we know about the modeling on the teeth already and by the way, that's more than just a cosmetic effect. The teeth are brittle at that point. They're very porous. Uh, and I've, I've spent the last 18 years working on patients, and I've probably done about five or six very big fluoride cases where the teeth were so destroyed that we had to rebuild the whole mouth. And that's very costly. And I can tell you that the cost of that, of fixing fluorosis, is way more expensive than just adding it to our water supply. So you'll hear arguments often the other way saying it's so cheap, it's like a dollar or, or, or cents to just treat every, every citizen with water fluoridation, but they don't ever get into what it actually costs to restore it. Um, the things that we hear the most about are the accumulation in bones. Obviously, you know, advanced cases of like say skeletal fluorosis, that's gonna happen in places like India or China where they have high amounts of natural as well, uh, or even in Japan with the big the whole Minamata thing that happened years ago where they, it, was, it, was, it was devastating, crippling effects to not only the people who ingested it, but to their offspring as well. That's, that's very, very high levels. I don't, we'll see very few cases of that, I think, in this country. What we will see, though, are thyroid issues. And I'm convinced that a lot of the low thyroid issues uh, are probably, uh, at least in part, caused by heavy fluoride in the body. Because remember, fluoride is the most powerful halogen. It's going to compete with iodine. So we need iodine for an active thyroid that's healthy. If, if you have any kind of iodine issues in your body, either you're deficient or your body just doesn't utilize it well, fluoride's going to win. So you're going to have all kinds of thyroid issues. Kidney problems. If your kidneys aren't clearing away stuff easily and uh, in, a, in a normal manner, fluoride's going to mess that up as well. So if you have kidney problems, maybe that's a, that's a contributing factor. Uh, people who are diabetics, they tend to have to urinate a lot throughout the night usually. They have to drink a lot of water because they're constantly thirsty. They're getting more fluoride than you and I. And so this is a subgroup again that would be 
uh, very negatively affected by by all this fluoride in our water. And and just so you know, which I think I mentioned before, you know they lowered the level last year because of all these things. But I think what they're actually labeling as their main reason for is is that the there's it's now in 41 percent of adolescents now have some form of fluorosis on their teeth. So the modeling on the teeth, the white patches, the brown patches, the just the whole brittleness of it. That's in 41% of adolescents now. That, that, that number's grown dramatically over the past decade. And I think it's just because it's, it's, it's everywhere. As I mentioned before, it, it, you know, it, it's in pesticides, which are used to treat crops oftentimes. Uh, it, 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 it's in our water supply, so it's getting into our food products. Sometimes it's even added to food products. So we're getting way too much of it. So big distinction between topical and systemic. Interesting. So... Just to kind of play the devil's advocate, what would be the potential dangers of removing the fluoride from the water? Do you think we would see an epidemic of cavities forming or any other problems like that that would result? Yeah, uh, I, would, I would guarantee that there would be no change at all. In fact, if anything, we'd probably see some improvement in overall health. But there wouldn't be any change in cavity rates. Um, it's just, again, when you're drinking it systemically, you're not getting a beneficial effect on the teeth. And in fact, there have been studies, even published in my own trade publications, um, um, that showed by, by reputable toxicologists and authors that it has little to no, no effect on the teeth beneficially when you take it in, in water at all. Topically, again, works. Systemically, doesn't. So it's not doing its intended function. So if you turn it off and all over the country, you're not going to see any cavities go up. And in fact, you know... Oftentimes they'll say that the reason why they do this is for those that are uh, not as privileged, those that maybe can't afford to go to the dentist or m maybe can't afford to buy toothpaste. So we're helping them. Well, it's interesting that a lot of those groups are now coming out against fluoridation. LULAC, uh, which is the large Hispanic organization here in the country, uh, they came out against it publicly just this six months ago. So they're now – that's the largest Hispanic group in the entire country has come out against it. Uh, Martin Luther King's daughter – and niece have both come out and spoke against this, Alveda and Bernice King. There's several other big authorities who have now come out against this. So, so I know that for infants, they say that you definitely don't want to use a fluoride toothpaste with infants that it can be especially susceptible to fluorosis. Can you speak a little bit to that issue? Yeah, and actually it even goes beyond that. Uh, our own CDC uh, and the ADA, the American Dental Association, uh, who promotes fluoride and water fluoridation says that you should not uh, use f fluoridated water, tap water, to make formula for infants because they're getting too much fluoride there. So besides not using the toothpaste because the child might swallow it, which is dangerous, now we're even talking about water fluoridation issues. So I, you know, that's that that's a huge subgroup that is being affected by this. And most people don't, you know, if you can't afford to go buy spring water or get a reverse osmosis system, or some kind of special system on your house where you can maybe try to filter this out, which you can never get it all out. You can get 85, 90% of it out. It's a tiny molecule. Then you have no choice. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. That brings up the, the, the whole, there's always an ethical issue to this. And that is, does somebody have the right to impose medication on you without your consent? Yeah. And that's what this is. Well, this is definitely a very important topic, and uh, we will discuss it more in future videos. Can you tell us your website and any other resources you might refer people to where they could learn more about water fluoridation? Sure. My website is, is just my name. It's just griffincole.com, G-R-I-F-F-I-N-C-O-L-E.com. But uh, probably the best website out there for all this information, all the scientific studies, videos, everything – is fluoridealert.org. It's called the Fluoride Action Network. Uh, Paul Conard, who actually wrote probably the best book on this I've ever seen, um, which is which is out there, uh, runs that site. And it's fluoridealert.org, O-R-G. Um, Keepers of the Well is in California. I'm not sure if it's keepersofthewell.org or .com, but that's a great site too. But I think you'll get all your information from that one. Thank you so much for your time. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can see our future videos where we'll talk more about water fluoridation in Austin and in other cities, maybe even your city. So I hope that you'll tune in again soon. Leave us a comment. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.